Sir Ivan Rogers, here on the right, was our man in Brussels, the seasoned diplomat with the ear of prime ministers past and present. But now he's gone, attacking Theresa May's government for its muddled thinking about Brexit. And former colleagues say his loss will be great only months before negotiations begin. His resignation at this particular point, just before the triggering of Article 50, is a shame because he's a man of great experience and expertise and knowledge uh, who would be very useful for the government. I think it's a blow because he was a hugely experienced, professional, dedicated um, public servant. Um, he was a really good diplomat, but he also had that real insight into how the EU worked. Sir Ivan's job was to be Theresa May's eyes and ears at the negotiations in Brussels. But in an outspoken resignation email, he revealed that even he was being kept out of the loop, saying, we do not yet know what the government will set as negotiating objectives for the UK's relationship with the EU after exit. That plan is being kept hidden, or at least is still being prepared, behind closed doors in Downing Street. Foreign Secretary, was he pushed to resign? Hi. Who's going to replace Hi. him? Ministers today refuse to give, yes, a running commentary, or at least take any questions off their script. In terms of our preparations for Brexit, we absolutely have the right resources. For months, Sir Ivan helped David Cameron try to reform the EU ahead of the referendum, traipsing fruitlessly between London and Brussels. But he said in his letter that his new political masters were not prepared for the even bigger talks ahead. Serious multilateral negotiating experience, he said, was in short supply in Whitehall. The structure of the UK's negotiating team needs rapid resolution. The government, he added, should listen more to British officials in Brussels and make a stronger case for the importance of a trade deal with the EU. Saying, contrary to the beliefs of some, free trade does not just happen when it is not thwarted by authorities. Brexit MPs said this all confirmed that Sir Ivan was too pessimistic about leaving the EU and he was right to go. The email was verging on the pompous, really, in the sense that it was an awful lot about him and a lot about, you know, truth, as though everything he said to the government was almost chiselled in, in tablets of stone. As we go into what is an incredibly important negotiation, we should have somebody leading for the UK who clearly believes that the outcome can be beneficial to the UK. But there were warnings against any attempt to politicise the civil service. We're creating an atmosphere where anyone who does not simply parrot the view of a certain political group as seen to be getting in the way of Brexit, and that is not what civil servants are there to do. The charge from Sir Ivan Rogers is a serious one. The government is not ready for the discussions about Brexit that are due within months, that it doesn't have a strategy or negotiating team in place. So as the Foreign Office here starts looking for a new ambassador, MPs are looking for answers about what the government's objectives are. And they're hoping Theresa May will provide some in a speech on Brexit expected soon. One she'll have to write without Sir Ivan Rogers at her shoulder in Brussels. Well, joining me now from Downing Street is our deputy political editor, John Pina. John, since we've come on air just in the last few minutes, we're hearing that a new diplomat has been appointed. What more can you tell us? Well, George, we now know the new ambassador will be Sir Tim Barrow. He is a, a senior official at the Foreign Office, a former Moscow ambassador, a man who's done time in Brussels in his career, and also someone who Downing Street will hope they can have a smoother uh, relationship with than they did with Ivan Rogers. Still some tricky questions, though, George, uh, still facing the, the government, because the Rogers resignation highlighted some tensions. More uh, departments are involved, more widely than just the Foreign Office, tensions between very senior officials in some cases and key ministers and those officials believe that those ministers simply don't understand or won't admit the true complexity of the Brexit question. Now to key Brexiteers it's about loyalty and faith and that's a red rag to a bull to a lot of civil servants who say they don't take sides they take orders and make them work. Why does it matter? Well as if this negotiation coming up wasn't difficult and complex enough there are tensions underlying it all between officials, senior officials and senior ministers ministers, as well as a continuing resentment between Remainers and Brexiteers, although that civil war was done and dusted about half a year ago.